Okay, here's the video I knew was going to come out. Everybody already knew this video existed, and yet, because the media told you that this guy was just running, so many people just wanted to believe the media, just like when Jesse Smollett was lynched by two uh, KKK Donald, with Donald Trump hats, right? <laughs> just like when uh, LeBron James claimed his uh, gate was spray-painted with the N-word. That just happened to be erased before anybody could see it, right? No preservation of the crime scene. No taking pictures of the N-word. No surveillance of any car or any person coming anywhere within 50 miles of LeBron James and his gate and his mansion, right? This is just, it's over and over again. And even this kid's Amud Arbery, his parents are calling it a modern-day lynching, which is exactly what they called the Jesse Smollett hoax. Oh, it was a modern-day lynching. And of course, the only people lynched in this case were the two white guys who followed the law to a T. I'll show you the video. If you want to quibble, quibble with Georgia law that allows law-abiding citizens to perform citizens' arrests, to apprehend criminals who are committing crimes in progress. Right? This is the law. This is how civilization is preserved. This is how... This is the only reason why the whole country doesn't look like South Chicago. It doesn't look like a war-torn Kosovo ghetto. Cops review new security camera video of man who appears to be Amud Arbery walking into a construction site and running off just minutes, actually seconds, before he was shot as armed Black Panthers protest in the neighborhood where he was killed so this white neighborhood has been terrorized by the property crimes this guy was committing over and over and over again on video over and over again in that house terrorized when as soon as Amud Arbery ran out of the house the water pipes just happened to be broken and all of a sudden water started flooding down the street let's take a look at the video and now they have Black Panthers terrorizing the whole neighborhood with widespread support to just go ahead and shoot anybody in that neighborhood just for being white? Like, it's absurd, guys. And everyone who thinks they're being so... Look, there he is. Oh, oh, he's, oh, he's out for a jog. Oh, yeah, hmm, let me just stand here for a second. Oh, oh, what's this? Oh, I just happen to be at this construction site that I'm already on footage, video footage, going into a zillion times, scoping it out, trespassing, burglaring, just like when he stole a flat screen TV from Walmart 14 or 15 months ago. Breaking his, pro breaking his pro violating his probation for when he carried a gun onto school property and then resisted arrest. Okay. So they already all the neighbor all the neighbors already had their eye looking out for this guy going into this house, and it appears that see and here's the neighbor, okay. And the surveillance footage was set off, and this guy's calling nine one one right now. We've already listened to the nine one one call. He says, "Yeah, there's a guy in the house," and this guy probably heard him calling nine one one, okay. And he was breaking the water pipes when he was in there because as soon as he left, there he goes running. Okay, running down the street. It's the only time he was jogging is when he was running, when he was trying to get away from being arrested because he knows he was busted red-handed. All right, into this house that he's been in a million times. The whole neighborhood was already watching out because people don't like just being pat if you go into any black neighborhood and you start co constantly breaking into one house or you break into one a house one time and stealing stuff what happens in the black community vigilante justice there he goes did you see him anyway i will provide the link the guy was calling 911 he was on the phone with 911 this guy knew he was busted and there he goes down the street to his death, running right at the guys 50 yards, run across the pickup truck, grab the gun, pull the gun right towards you. You know, 
totally committing suicide. And it was a perfectly legally executed c citizen's arrest. Crime in progress. Even confirmation that it wasn't even the first time because the father and son had literally had the gun stolen out of their truck six weeks earlier that the media is lying about and saying never happened. Why is the, me why is the media telling nonstop lies? Why did the media even try to pretend that this guy was just out for a jog? When all the 911 calls and probably all this surveillance footage as well was, was documented the whole time. This is all about inciting even more black on white violence, even more chaos in the country, right when the country needs it the least in the middle of this coronavirus crisis. Why is the media trying to incite race riots and race wars right in the middle of a coronavirus crisis? And you think you're being a good person by not even questioning the media's motives, by not even questioning your own bigotry towards white people who don't dress like yuppies, who don't drive a Toyota Prius, who drive a pickup truck instead of a Tesla, who wear Wrangler jeans rather than designer jeans, who drink gas station coffee rather than Starbucks who hunt for their meat rather than just buy it at the store? You want to look down your nose at a retired cop who dedicated his whole life to law enforcement and was an employee of the district attorney's office helping to keep his community safe for his entire adult life. And you see a 10 second video and you want to believe the absolute worst and it's too much to bear for you to accept that that guy, Arbery, was simply desperate not to go back to jail yet again. Still on probation, just caught stealing a flat screen TV from Walmart just 14 or 15 months before this crime. On surveillance footage, constantly inside this house and breaking into cars and trucks around this neighborhood. What, are you going to stop and question your own bigotry towards the white people? Assuming the very worst about them and assuming the very best about this guy who was a career criminal? And you want to say, oh, it's okay if he wasn't actually jogging? Even though that's what you firmly believed at first because you were told it and you didn't want to question it? And he didn't want to question what kind of shoes he was wearing. And he didn't want to question what kind of shorts he was wearing, what kind of belt he was wearing. He didn't want to question why his shorts were down below his ass when he's supposedly out for a serious run. You can't bring yourself to consider the possibility that he was just using jogging as a disguise for casing and burglaring. Even when he was literally caught stealing a flat screen TV from Walmart just 14 or 15 months ago. And you can't imagine that it was a perfectly legally executed citizen's arrest with guns and all. You can't imagine that this guy wasn't just afraid of two scary white guys with guns. You couldn't imagine that he was literally caught in a crime in progress and that's the only reason he attacked those guys because he didn't want to go back to jail. It was always the most basic explanation. There was never any fear this is a cry bully tactic. Oh, he was just scared. Oh, they just shot him down for no reason. People throw their lives away all the time. People OD on drugs all the time. People commit suicide by cop all the time. People make bad decisions and ruin their lives and spend their lives in jail or commit suicide by literally grabbing the barrel of a gun that's pointed right at you and yanking on it, which cause, even causes the, can cause the trigger to be pulled, rather than just wait for the cops to come. Everybody's got an excuse. Oh, I was just scared. Oh, I just made a bad decision because, because of slavery 200 years ago. Oh, I didn't pass my math test, but that's only because of the systemic racism. That's only because I'm f from an underserved community.
And we've seen it a million times. We've seen it with this coronavirus where, you know, the vast majority of the black community cannot take any personal responsibility for their own failure to respect social distancing, advisories, or laws. Go to house parties with 200 people, 1,000 people, party in the streets all day with no mask, passing blunts around, and then you want to say it's systemic racism that causes black people to get coronavirus more? So people are going to watch this video and, they're, and they're, most people are not going to question their own bigotry towards the white people that caused them to be 100% dead wrong about this case. And like I said, if you want to criticize one thing about this, criticize the Georgia state law that says citizens can perform citizens' arrests. And instead, these guys are going to be found innocent and you're going to have these race riots. This whole neighborhood is going to be terrorized for months, if not years, if not burned down and people killed in there. You already have literally black supremacists, black panthers terrorizing the neighborhood. No justice, no peace. Blacks commit 90% of the violence between whites and blacks. And they, and they want to pretend they're, they're looking for justice. You'll notice their definition of justice has absolutely nothing to do with black people taking any accountability for their own behavior. No, no personal account, accountability for Ahmoud Arbery. No personal accountability for all of these people and whatever bad decisions they've made. Just perfect victims walking through life and proud black supremacists terrorizing this little out-of-the-way white neighborhood that never wanted anything to do with any of this for simply trying to enforce the law. The legal law that they follow to a T. Like, right and wrong has nothing to do with it. Justice has nothing to do with it. And, uh, you know, there's a whole lot of white cowards who are just going to continue to go along but with supporting pure evil and supporting perfect black victimhood. And, it, you know, you really, you really think that's respect for black people when you pretend that they have no personal responsibility for their own state in life and their own bad decisions. You don't respect black people. You're just afraid to criticize them. You're afraid to be called a racist. You're a coward. And you would rather support blatant evil and call it justice rather than make the black kids angry. Rather than criticize the media who flat out lie to you to try to incite you to hate white people, even if you're white, to try to pressure you to not have any kids, or if you do, to, you know? You'll notice every single commercial on TV is a white woman and a black male, and you want to pretend there's nothing nefarious going on there, that justice has anything to do with that. Look up the UN definition of genocide and everything that's happening to white people is the definition. Pressured and shamed to not have kids. Pressured and shamed to open their borders wide open. Pressured and shamed to become a small minority and the, it, when whites were 90% of this country just 50 years ago. 60 years ago, right? Pressured and shamed to let black criminals... Do whatever they want. Pressured and shamed to never enforce the law, to never carry out a citizen's arrest. Cops are pressured to just let Michael Brown grab your gun and try to shoot you with your own police gun. and Then you should just fight him to the death with your fists rather than just shoot him like you're obligated to even when Michael Brown weighs two or three times as much as you, you're really supposed to just fight every suicidal thug to the death? And you want to call that justice, right? The whole black community, anytime a black person is arrested, you'll, you'll see there's so many people, they've all got their phones out, they're all trying to instigate the cops. They're all trying to get, you know, pushed back or assaulted or, or punched or 
arrested by the cops so that they can play this race hustle on the internet, this manipulative. Justice has nothing to do with it. Trying to create an environment where all cops quit so that guys like this are the only people with guns around and there's no, you know, and and, and law-abiding people are not even allowed to have guns. This same guy probably supports uh, taking away the Second Amendment. So that only the Bloods and the Crips are the only ones with guns. And they passionately oppose stop and frisks in gang-ridden neighborhoods where stolen illegal guns that are used for murders are rampant. 50 people shot in Chicago just last weekend. It doesn't even make the national news. Oh, but Ahmoud Arbery, he was just out for a run. He was just minding his own business, and he was just so scared of the white guys. So scared that he went way out of his way to invade this little out-of-the-way neighborhood to try to steal as much stuff as he could over and over and over and over again. So scared that when busted, rather than just go back to jail, he literally committed suicide. Rather than run into the woods, he said, fuck it. I'm not going back to jail yet again. I'm going to grab on the shotgun and then I'm going to be remembered as a martyr. Then I'm going to then I'm going to be a legend. The only way this guy could have ever been remembered is by doing exactly what he did. And you'll you'll see more and more copycats like this. A lot of people would rather be killed by a cop or killed in a citizen's arrest while committing a crime rather than just be an anonymous person just like the guy in Indianapolis who was live streaming his high speed police chase live streaming while he shoots his gun at the police and then he's dead and now he's a, now he's a legend he's a legend and that's the world you want to live in this is the world these are the values you want to live by this is what you want to call justice by, by pretending that the very worst people in this country are the very best people in this country and the, and the biggest predators in this country are, are the, actually the biggest victims and the biggest victims are actually the biggest predators. You want to call that justice just because you're afraid of making the black kids angry? Actually, it's understandable, obviously. Race riots would be terrifying. It's already 90% of the violence between whites and blacks is black and white. A couple years ago, it was only 85% of the violence was black on white. It's, you see it escalating. All right, guys, I'll see you soon.